So I want to talk to you about something in 1 Timothy 6, verse 6. Now there is great gain in godliness with contentment. For we brought nothing into this world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we shall be content. You know, Paul tells us in this verse, he says, listen. He says, as long as you've got food and clothes, you need to be happy. You need to be content with that. You don't need to pursue things. Because everything in this life, every single thing, is all going to burn. You're not going to take anything with you. you. You arrive with nothing, and you're leaving with nothing. That's just the way it is. You know my neighbor, two doors down, this guy has an original 1969 Camaro Z28. The car's worth well over a hundred grand. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Every time he brings it out of the garage, I just sit there and look at it. But uh, it's going to burn. One day it's not going to exist anymore. So he goes on to tell us, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some people have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. But as for you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life, which you are called and about which you are made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. People listen. There's nothing wrong with working hard and earning things. There's nothing wrong with you working your, your butt off and making enough money to buy yourself a really nice house and a nice car. There's nothing wrong with that. If you earned it, more power to you. But you know what? It says for the love of money. Not money itself, the love of money. You know what? I know two people in my life. I have two people in my life that are absolutely the cheapest people I have ever met. And one of them, the first guy, this guy, I mean, he's cheap. And he makes, he makes way more money than I do. I mean, just way beyond. I mean, the guy's got a huge house, you know, pool, everything, but he's cheap. He, uh, he's the kind of guy that will come to your house, and he's done this. I'm not making this up. He's done this. He's come to my house for a barbecue, right? You know, a big barbecue, big spread in the backyard, and he, like, bring, brings chips. You know, a lot of times people will call around and ask my wife, well, what do you want us to bring? And she'll tell one person, well, you know, bring a side, you bring drinks, you bring chips. So this guy has showed up to a barbecue with like four or five bags of chips. And we just have a great barbecue and everything goes fine. And then all of a sudden it's time for him to go home. You know what he does? He goes around and finds his four bags of chips. And I don't care if there's three chips in the bottom of that bag. He rolls them all up and takes them home. Cheap. Cheap. And then I got this other relative. <laughs> and guys, listen, we go to a restaurant, they embarrass me. They embarrass me because we go to a restaurant and the check will come and she'll sit down with her husband and they'll get out their phone and whip out the calculator and they'll sit there and say, okay, the bill is 46.25 and you know, 15% tip, they'll figure it out and they'll say, okay, the tip's supposed to be like, you know, whatever, $11, whatever. They'll say, well, she didn't fill my iced tea glass up quick enough, so I'm going to knock that down to seven. But they figure out what the tip is and deduct from there. People, I have never figured out a tip in my life. If I go out to dinner and the, the bill is, you know what, 50, 60, 70 bucks, whatever, I automatically give the, the waitress a $10 tip, regardless. If I go out to breakfast and the bill is, you know, like, like eight, nine, ten dollars. I always give a five dollar tip. I don't care. I just do it. I figure that person's working hard. They're making minimum wage plus tips. Help them out. But, <laughs> and I got this other lady. 
One time we went out to dinner with these people and listen, it was me and my wife, a couple and their grandson was visiting and their grandson, he was probably, you know, 17, 18 years old. But anyway, she, the grandmother, when, when they asked her, she said, yeah, give us separate checks, us two on their check. And she said the grandson got his own check. They didn't even pay for their grandson's dinner who was out to visit them. And I know these people, and these people are cheap. People, that's the love of money. That's the love of money when you just hoard it. You're afraid of losing a penny that you don't have to lose. That's where the sin comes in. There's absolutely nothing wrong with working hard and earning things and enjoying everything that you've got. That is a gift of God. The Bible says it is a gift of God for you to work hard and enjoy the fruits of your labor. But when you start getting cheap, I mean just cheap to where you just chisel everyone around you, that's when it becomes sin. And you know what? It seems like cheap people, they're, just, they're never happy. They're never happy with their wealth. They're never happy with anything. You know, I've, I've got a lot of, a lot of friends that, you know, will, will want something that I've got. You know, they'll, I'll see something and they'll, they'll know that I'm going to sell it. And they'll say, you know, like, like for instance, a welder, a, a tool, something like that, that I don't need anymore. And they'll say, well, hey, you know, if you, if you want to get rid of that, how much you want for it? People, I never put a price on anything. I say, if you want it, take it. If you want it, take it. Because I've got other friends that are the same way. You know, they, they, uh, they have something that, I, that they don't no longer need. And I'll say, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. What do you give me for it? Or what do you want for it? They'll say, take it. <laughs> take it. That's the people that, that they value friendship more than money. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to give you something to think about. Heaven or hell, you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.